I bought seven highly rated document cameras from Amazon to find the best one for teachers. Because we're teachers, the document cameras needed to be cheap. These document cameras are all rated four stars or better on Amazon, and none of them cost me more than $100. So which ones are the best good, cheap document cameras? Keep watching to find out. All of these document cameras were plug and play, meaning that when I plugged them into my computer, they immediately showed up in programs like Zoom or the computer's camera app. I tested each of these with my work devices, a Chromebook and an M1 MacBook Pro. I did have to use an adapter to make connections with the MacBook since it only has USB-C ports. As I mentioned, I tested these cameras in QuickTime, each computer's camera app, and in Zoom. I will say that all of these document cameras look best in QuickTime or inside their own software programs. All cameras look pretty poor when using them with Zoom, but I would say this is a Zoom problem and not a camera problem. For my work devices, I needed a camera that could use browser-based software like a Chrome extension. This is because software cannot be installed on my work computer's hard drives without the tech department signing in for the install, and that is something that they will not do. So any software I have on my computer that I want to add, it has to be browser-based. It cannot go onto the hard drive. So first up, we have the 8 megapixel IPvo V4K document camera. This camera is at the top of our $100 budget. It has physical exposure and focus buttons and pretty much is all plastic. But the plastic build is forgiven once you see the image. The ultra high definition image is crisp and it can handle a 3264 by 2448 resolution. This uses a Chrome extension called the IPvo Visualizer. There are tons of features once you open up the software. Image rotation, image flip, magnification, annotation, freeze frame, highlighting, grid lines, time lapse, and a lot more other things that you can do. If you have selected the highest resolution, you can just barely get a full sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch paper into the frame. I've found that the software sometimes freezes up and you have to restart Chrome to fix that. Also, the software does not remember any of your settings. So for example, I have to go in each and every time and select the highest resolution every time I want to use the camera, which I find extremely annoying. As far as audio goes, it's a bit mediocre. I would say that the IPvo has a great image and okay sound. This is the IPvo 4K. It is recording in quick time. I'm about a foot and a half away from it. I'm sitting in front of my MacBook right here and the camera's just here. So um, right away you see that this is a very good image. It looks good. You can see exactly what it is. Color temperature is correct. Let's switch our papers. It felt you saw that it focused in pretty quickly. I have not hit a focus button yet, and it everything is in focus very nicely. Um, this is what it looks like. If we want to see some color, let's bring our book in here, and it gets the book, and oh, the text looks really good. Looking at my screen here on the MacBook, the text is super crisp. The image is really crisp. The colors are true to what I am looking at. The black page looks black. It's mostly black around here. And you can see that's a true black there. So this color um, reproduction is great. This is the IPvo V 4K document camera in QuickTime on a MacBook Pro. Next, we have the Aver M5 at $90. This is physically the best quality document camera on this list. It is also an 8 megapixel camera with the same max resolution as the IPvo, but this one includes a built-in light. I was easily able to show a full sheet of paper since this is an inch or two taller than the IPvo. This worked right away in the Max Camera app, but as you can see, there are very few options if you're using any of these cameras as plug and play devices. If you want the full experience, you must use some kind of document camera software. 
I did try to do that with this camera, but I found out that they only offer hard installs and no Chrome extensions. So after searching for a while, I found a software that was made for other Ava cameras called Spear Lite. I did have to replug the M5 in and out several times before the software would see the M5. But once Spear Lite saw the camera, the image was super clear and crisp. The mic also had very good audio. Get our book in here it's not far off it's a little muted you see the black page it doesn't look quite black it's kind of off black but uh, it's, it's decent the text looks great so that all looks good Let's slide in our old handy dandy paper that looks good so this is the Aver M5. It's what it sounds like and what it looks like when using QuickTime to record. Our third camera is the 8 megapixel Inswine INS-1. This is a tiny document camera with an all plastic build. It has a built-in light, autofocus, and brightness buttons. It came with a manual, an anti-glare sheet, and a microscope adapter. It did have browser-based software available in the form of a Chrome extension called Document. I would say that this was the most versatile software that I used. All of the standard stuff like rotation, zoom, annotation, and brightness were there, but this also had a whiteboard feature and a feature that allowed you to open up files from your computer and display them alongside whatever you are projecting. This is an incredible feature for an art teacher because you can show your photo reference as you are drawing it. The downside of this camera is that it's so small it wobbles easily and any bumps to the table transfer to the microphone. The image is great and the audio is okay in recordings. All right, so here we are with the InSwan. I have it uh, about two feet away from me. Well, no, about a foot and a half away from me. A foot, a foot and a half away from me. And it is recording right now. It has a nice, a nice picture here. We're in the QuickTime app on my MacBook Pro. And this is what it looks like. This is what it sounds like. It has good focus from end to end. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the autofocus button anyway. This thing does wobble a lot <laughs> every time you touch it. If I just hit the table, it wobbles. Get your autofocus. Every time you touch it, you gotta wait for it to stop wobbling. This is not very stable, but it has great focus from end to end. It's keeping up with my waving hand pretty good. Next, we have the five megapixel Okio Labs Okio Cam T. This one is unique in the fact that you can dismantle it and make a small, flat, portable bundle. It's all plastic and the base and the included extension pole assemble using little triangular connections. The Chrome extension for the Okio Cam 2 only works on Chromebooks, so I was unable to test this with my Mac. This has the poorest image being only five megapixels. The software is what you expect, but there are some annoyances. One of the selling points is that this works with educational apps like Google Classroom and Flipgrid. But if you don't want to give access to those accounts, you are still asked to sign in anyway. Also, some of the features like time lapse and stop motion require you to download additional software just to use those features. This camera also does not have a microphone. And to capture a full sheet of paper, you must use that extension pole, which makes it wobbly. Image is decent, but there is no audio.
Now we have the 8 megapixel Visolink D10 document camera. It has a solid build that does not wobble, but it is mostly heavy duty plastic. This one is unique in the fact that it has two cameras, one 1080p selfie camera and one 4K document camera. It includes a built-in light, there is a bubble level, and a couple of touch buttons for the light and the focus built into the neck of the camera. It came with a USB-C adapter and a manual. This camera is quite tall compared to the others on this list and easily captured a full sheet of paper. However, this did not come with any type of document camera software, so I tried it with IPVO's visualizer software and it worked. All features were there and the image quality was crisp. I was able to choose either of the two cameras. The text and line work on the paper looked great and the audio was clear. All right, so here is the Viso, uh, Viso Link D10. I am in QuickTime on my MacBook Pro. I have the settings for the recording as the document camera, number three is the camera. And for the microphone, I have selected the streaming camera as the microphone. So here's what we got. This is the quality of it. Um, I think this has a really good image. This has a really good image. Um, what I don't like is that I mean, you can turn the brightness and stuff on, and you can hit an autofocus button, but that's the only two buttons on the whole thing it, it are for the light and focus. There's a bubble level, and what makes this unique is that we can go from the document camera to streaming camera. All right, so here we are on the Visolink D10. So... I have um, the camera set to this, the streaming cam, and the microphone is set to the streaming cam also. And I gotta say, I am impressed with this microphone. It's one of the best sounding microphones of all the document cameras that I've looked at today. What I'm thinking is as I'm hitting the autofocus button, nothing's happening. So I believe that the autofocus only works for the document camera. I believe this has built in autofocus and there's no way of adjusting it. So I don't think you can adjust the highlights or the exposure or the focus or anything like that. You have to wholly depend on it, but it's doing a good job. So this is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. Visolink D10. Next, we have the 8 megapixel Thustar QXC 700. It has a solid build and is tall enough to get a whole sheet of paper into view. It came with a USB-C adapter and has a light that adjusts between three levels of brightness with just a simple touch. It also came with a built-in screwdriver for the hinges. This does not come with any software, so again, I tested it with IPVO's Visualizer software. It worked. It had a clear image, but if you use the rotation buttons on the camera, it had a bright pink flash that goes across the screen. Now I know this wasn't a fluke and I didn't just have a bad unit because in the manual they actually mentioned this pink flash going across your screen is perfectly normal. This one has horrible audio and the image gets very soft along the edges. All right, so I'm on the Thu Star um, document camera. It's currently recording this, the, um, what's on my desk and it's also recording my audio. So this is what the video looks like. This is what the audio sounds like. As you can see, the manual is autofocus. Let me hit the autofocus button. The manual says on Mac systems that you go search for QuickTime Player and this is how you uh, would record video. Now, one of the things I do not like is that there's a whole page talking about how to be gentle with this thing. Make sure you put your hand on the base. Make sure you don't carry it by the arm. Make sure that when you're pressing the buttons that you brace it. Don't just press. Brace the whole thing. Up last is our cheapest camera, the Thustan XZC200. 
This is a manual focus camera that I think is of the no-name, mass-produced variety that is sold under different names by different companies. The box says Thustan, while the manual says Thustar. This camera does not have a light, had no included software, and maxes out at 1080p. I use it with the IPvo Visualizer software without a problem, but I did have to turn my document to get the right orientation when using this. You could also place the camera to the side of your document to make sure you have the right orientation. This document camera had the best stand because it was all metal and highly adjustable. The image is pretty good if you focus it correctly, but the audio is pretty bad. It sounds like there's a ton of wind blowing by the microphone at all times. I'm about 10 inches from the table, but I want to get the whole piece. So I just got to lift that and that lifts very easily. So now I have the whole piece in, in frame. Now I have to go back. And I'm just slowly turning this, trying to get it exactly where I want it. And that looks pretty good. Whew. No, it doesn't. Okay, so I can see that having to mainly focus that can be a problem. 9 by 12 sketchbook very easily in. Um, let's move this out of the way. And let's try this. Okay, of course you cannot read that, so I'm going to get a little bit closer. Um, I am about 8 inches from the tabletop, I would say. What's cool is that this kind of can swivel, even though I have a bolt in there locking it to the base, it still swivels. Now, here's the writing, and I can read that. A man pushes a lovely woman on the swing. I can read that. Out of these cameras, there are a few that I would recommend to any teacher. The Five Star Beast, the IPvo V4K, will work for any teacher. It has nice software, doesn't require a sign-in or hard install to work, and has a clear image and decent sound. The downside is that it's a bit short, which means that even at its highest resolution, you will have to put it on a box or something to make it taller if you want to show larger pieces of paper. Overall, this is a safe choice, and I think it would do for most people. The Aver M5, I believe, is by far the best quality, most polished piece of equipment on this list. It has the best build quality by far and what I believe is one of the most well-rounded pieces of equipment with both great image and good sound. Although I was not able to test the AverTouch software that they include, the image was great in other programs and I don't think that anyone would be disappointed with this one. If this had had a dedicated Chrome extension, this might have been my recommendation over the IPvo V4K. If you care less about the hardware and more about the options in the software, the NSWAN INS1 should be at the top of your list because it has by far the most useful software. The whiteboard option allows you to work out problems or digitally draw right there on the screen. And the option to pull up files from your computer is a game changer. I can see teachers using that in so many different ways. The image is one of the best and the audio is not terrible. For those wondering, I did try the document software with other document cameras, but it would not recognize anything but the NSWAN. So if you want that document software, look into one of the NSWAN cameras. The last camera I would recommend from this list is the Viso D10. This is a bit of a wild card pick since it doesn't have any software, but the quality of the image and sound this document camera captures is at the top of this list. If you need to use your camera for live presentations like an online class or Zoom meeting, the two cameras make it very easy to go from face cam to document cam without having to readjust your camera each time. It is one of the tallest cameras on this list and like the Aver, had both great image and good sound when compared to the other cameras that we listed here. The only reason I hesitate to recommend it above the M5 and the IPvo is because it does not have its own software. You can easily use it out of the box with Zoom, OBS, and other camera-centric apps, 
but to see its full potential, you need document camera software. Currently, this is the camera that I intend to purchase for my own use, but I will use it with IPVO's visualizer software. I know that this is a gamble because right now, it looks like IPVO software will work with any type of document camera, but I know that this can change with the simple update in the future. Because I like the camera so much and it's half of the price of the others, I am willing to take that risk. And very quickly, let's talk about the cameras that I do not recommend. I cannot recommend Okia Labs Okio Cam T for a few reasons. First, the extension piece is necessary to show a whole sheet of paper, but when you use it, it makes the whole unit more wobbly. It also makes adjusting the height of the camera more finicky. I found I was constantly breaking the triangular connections apart every time I went to tilt the neck of the camera. And also this thing is overpriced. It is one of the most expensive cameras on this list, but it has the least features. It's only five megapixels and there's no microphone. The software is also a bit strange. There's a Chrome extension that doesn't work universally with Chrome. It won't run on a Mac using the Chrome browser, only on Chromebooks. Then you have additional software to run features of the camera like stop motion and time lapse. That's additional software you're clicking in and out of when you're trying to use it. The Thustar QXC700 just seemed like a sketchy purchase in every way possible. It didn't come with its own software. When using the built-in buttons, it created a purple flash across the display. And the manual dedicated a whole page on how to handle this thing carefully. And when using this camera, the camera app on my MacBook froze up and I had to reset the laptop before I could get function back to the camera app. None of this bode well to me and I cannot recommend this to anyone. Now I cannot recommend the Thustan XZC200 to the typical teacher because I think the learning curve is just too high. For those that live stream, use OBS and like to fiddle with their live streaming setup, this would be a nice cheap little gadget to play around with. But for the majority of the teachers that just want something that works, this is a bad choice. This is mainly because it's a manual focused camera. Every time the distance between your document and the camera changes, you will have to readjust the tiny lens on the camera and that is no small feat. If the thickness of your document never changes and you rarely ever touch or readjust the height of your camera, this is a nice cheap choice. But for the rest of us, it's just too much work. So those are my recommendations for good, cheap document cameras under $100. If you got this far into the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. If you have another good, cheap document camera that you've been using, please leave that down in the comments and share why you like it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around the classrooms.